time exploring the work of Sondheim as our kind of living playwright. Uh, so uh, this, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a true Chicago theater guy because I've gotten to grow up and this has always been, always been my base, always will be my base and my home. I've had the, I've, I've had the opportunity, the great opportunity to work other places, but, but this is the home, this is where it really, where I feel I really do my work. So let's talk a little bit about, so um, out of Rockford came Cheap Trick and Gary Griffin. This is very exciting news. <laughs> I saw Cheap wow. Trick. And they played high school dances when I was a kid. So yeah. that's very exciting. Nice. And then you did, and you also mentioned your first um, going to the Schubert scene chorus line, which is something also very near and dear to me. My mother was actually a very close friend of Jimmy Kirkwood, who a lot of people don't know who he is. Wow. But so um, I actually have the original tapes of the original workshops of Chorus cool. Line that wow. you know a lot of people get left money things like that yes. but having a mother involved in theater I was left the original workshop yeah. tapes which are probably more valuable wow. than you know any money I could have so um, so the, how did so how did you where did you actually what happened when you left Rockford and you like what was your first show that you did uh, out of school well I I went to Wisconsin undergrad to be a journalism major but I kept wandering back into the theater people do that yeah yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> they do yeah I mean it's just you don't cozy. really know you just sort of yes exactly you know and um, I, I did shows as an undergraduate and uh, graduate student and um, I, I did I think one of the first full-length plays I directed was a play called the shadow box uh, which was about a hospice, <laughs> and then I did Children of a Lister God. And the first musical I directed was a Sunday musical, was a student production of A Little Night Music. So wow. I, 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 that, I, that bug a bit early. <laughs> so, and you, you, you did end up at Shakespeare Theater, but you did also go to New York. Mm -hmm. You did quite a bit in New York mm -hmm. as well. Um, what was that like? Um, it's, it's great. It's, it's uh, different than Chicago. Yeah, it's fun and sexy, and, and uh, there's a lot. Um, it's um, you know it's a it's a great adventure. It's not as you know I think one of the, one of the things you learn once you, once you I didn't really start working until in New York in New York until I was in my late thirties, and by that time you're kind of set in your ways in some ways like where you like to live, how you like to live. So New York is more of a a great um, working thing. But when I'm finished, I want to come back because this is home. People always say that about yeah. Chicago. So what is it? What do you think it is about Chicago? Michael, too, both of you. What is it about Chicago, Chicago theater? It just draws people back. People leave, they come back. Because it's raw. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always, you always hear the actors, it's about the truth. Mm -hmm. And I think there's nothing like a more truthful Chicago experience mm -hmm. than going to see a storefront production mm -hmm. and then seeing somebody who's, you know, been brought up to the ranks like uh, Mr. Griffin here because they bring that truth to the stage. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, it's not really unique to Chicago, but I really do think that that's part of Chicago's magic more than any other city. I think that, yeah, it's also, there's this kind of, in that way, it's, it's only about the work. I mean, there's so many, there's so many distractions in yes. New York that, um, that to get, actually you find yourself constantly trying to find an environment to protect the work there, where here that environment right. exists from the day you walk in. There's so much more financial in New York yeah. too. I mean, you had that experience yeah. with the color purple. Mm -hmm. And and profile and publicity yeah. and, of and course. lots of, just a lot of what really things that distract from the core values yes. of work. Chicago, it, 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 is amaz it is amazing to me sometimes when I see people come back and do shows and I just hear people say all the time, mm -hmm. I'd rather work in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's really quite a tribute to the city that, you know, people would rather work here. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and maybe it's a little easier to make it here, but um, I, it's still, we have such a, we have so much theater here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would never even say that there's an overabundance. I just think there's just so much and so much of it is so good. Yeah. Um, you know, from your bigger theaters to your storefront theaters. Um, so you've done, you've, you've worked in the bigger theaters, you've worked in the smaller theaters. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell us about this 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 journey and and doing Shakespeare theater, which I know is kind of your your baby. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I fell in love with the with the storefront, the the neighborhood Chicago based theater. That's what that's what I wanted to work in. That's why I wanted to come here. The work I was seeing there was what most excited me. So getting here, and I and I feel like in a way I've kind of been part of watching Chicago sort of grow up a little. You know, where you know the theaters now, the the resident theaters have their new homes, 
and and it's right we all should evolve to the place where we have more establishment because we, therefore we can preserve the work and, and maintain it but it started often you know chicago shakespeare started in the roof of a pub mm -hmm. steppenwolf up in highland park you know so there's you know the, those roots uh i think have been maintained you know so we so that's that's where it began that's where, where mine began and i think we all romantically want to go back there too you know i still mm -hmm. i still get jealous of young young artists and I see the work they're getting to do and they're sort of you know one thing that happens to you over time is you get defined and you you want to keep trying new things you think well, well that's you, know, so true. you know they don't have it you know there's there's not a lot of definition to them yet they can do whatever they want so you know it's it's a great part of the city and I love that the city supports it it isn't looked upon as oh how adorable but really we know that that's where the next work is going to come from I just saw PJ leaving uh, and the work you know he's doing in American Theatre Company mm -hmm. is clearly you know he's he's staking out a, a voice and a kind of work there and I, that's that's true all over the city and it's just great to see that yeah know? we were talking about that too when you go to theaters like Timeline or you go to theaters like you know they're doing Columbine now that you're not only entertained but you you learn mm -hmm. yes and, and it's great to be able to learn through such an art yeah. like theater you know to have people tell stories and yeah. Um, I think it's amazing. I, I just did a production of Fiorello at Encores in New York, hmm. and um, it was so great because people were talking about the timeline production of Fiorello. Yes. And, you know, Sheldon Hardick and PJ Powers. Had seen it. Yeah, yeah, they had done it, and so it was great to see. I loved hearing that that influence had been part of that show's history. You know, that's it's great. That's really yeah. cool. Um, so we're gonna, so I want to talk a little bit about we we touched on Shakespeare Theater, which when I started doing this about 15 years ago, I was going to the Ruth Page Center to mm -hmm. see right. the shows there. And now you look at some of these theaters that have really um, grown up. Um, yeah. Shakespeare Theater. We we're talking about the Black Ensemble. Yes. So for yes. anybody who's yes. not been to Shakespeare Theater, it's mm -hmm. an oh. amazing theater. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. It's iconic. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous in, on Navy Pier. And when you see what these what they've accomplished, going you know from what they've what they were to what they become. Um, and, and when you be, you be part of it for so long, like 15 years, you do, you see it evolve. And yeah. it's really, you see some theaters are gone, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but um, you see these theaters grow up, and right? I mean, Absolutely. you've been doing this a long time yes, too. Yes, I, I have. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to touch on, uh, the last time I interviewed um, Gary was with Anna Gasteyer, mm -hmm. and they, um, oh, passion, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you become such a Sondheim file, especially with Chicago Shakespeare mm -hmm. Theater. You just did a fantastic production of Sunday at the Park with George, almost a definitive production, I think. What is the biggest misconception you think people have about Stephen Sondheim, the artist and, and, and his music? I think that, well, I think one is that it's, um, that it's inaccessible, hmm. which I find shocking, uh, and that it's um, cold. Um, really? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think if you were, if, yeah. if you talk to people who, who resist it, it's usually well, I don't, I don't warm to it, I don't, or I, you know, it's, it's too much work or whatever. I don't, I'm not. But I, I, I mean, both of those things. I mean, I mean, there are things in Sondheim shows that are more moving than in any show I know Absolutely. Of, you know, so so they move me, and so maybe that's part of it. I mean, he may not be for everyone, but I think um, he's his. You know, we have been lucky to live through the time that he's working on these shows. These shows are gonna, they're gonna survive because they're great works, but we've also been part of watching them evolve and I think that's the, one of the things I'm, so, I'm really grateful for. I was having this moment the other day where I was trying to imagine what my career would have been like had he not written for the theater. I can't imagine. I can't, I mean, it's, they're inseparable. My, my growth as a person, even, you know, um, was, uh, has been defined by my relationship to his work. And so um, it's a, it's, he's had a huge impact. And I think um, I've learned so much. He's a great teacher. His works, when you inhabit them, when you really go in and really do them, you're changed. You are not the same when you leave them. We know. I know this is probably like saying, you know, to someone, do you have a favorite kid, but do you have a favorite Sondheim show? Yes, Sunday in the Park is my favorite. Sunday in the Park. And you had done it 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and then in the Upstairs Theater, mm -hmm. and then you redid it again. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it, this was such a superb production. I was saying, I'm not, I'm sorry to say this, I'm just not a huge Sondheim fan, <laughs> but that, that made me see it in a whole different light, mm -hmm. your production that you did of Sunday in the Park. 
I, I Especially the second act, mm -hmm. because the second act of More that show, yeah, act. has yeah. always been, you know, the first act is so perfect, you know, mm -hmm. with Surratt yeah. and all that. And, and, and the second act, it's such a director's vision, I think. And boy, you just honed in on something with the second mm -hmm. act of this mm -hmm. production. Yes. Which was phenomenal. Well, there was a, um, yeah, it, 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 and to me, there are things in that that are very, very moving. And I think the last line of that piece being so many possibilities is what I wanted to earn. Yes. It was to get you yes. to earn that line so you would think, hmm. so you would, the release being, we are all creative. We are not, creativity is not, our versions of creativity and whether you actually, whether it's a profession is different. Human beings are creative and we're creative when we, when we look at white and make and put something on it mm. and so that's the thing i think in that show that's missing There's a lot of people think well that's a show if you're not an artist it doesn't mean anything to you anybody who makes anything um that show is about that that isolation and that struggle and that meaning and uh so i wanted to get back to that so but it was there it was just there just had to find your way to it you know he gave you they he and lapine gave you the path it's getting out of the way and finding your way to that, that moment. Now, doing, doing a show 10 years later, uh -huh. we're, we're all 10 years older. <laughs> well, what, what, was, <laughs> some people, um, what, what was it like doing this show uh, 10 years later? What, what was, was different? They're what not, was, they were so, there were, there were just a couple of things that I even, that I did um, the same. I mean, I, I'm, you know, you grow up, you get older. Sondheim really charts your life. <laughs> no. Yeah, right. Awesome. That's what I'm saying. Because who you are at, you know, who I was at 42 doing it, I was very, um, I, think I, I think I was very interested in, in sort of shaking it up and, and, and revealing the experiment in the piece. And this time I was much more about the more humanist.